Beautiful. Hello, everyone, and welcome to our kickoff to the Spring 2023 series of Tuesday Times Roundtable. Today's session is entitled Misconceptions of Emotions and How They Affect Our Lives. My name is Michelle Zaldivar, your Senior Program Coordinator here at the Office of Global Learning Initiatives. I want to do a special thank you and shout out to our Assistant Director, Anna Prado, who is also monitoring the chat and answering any of your questions as they come in through there. If you haven't already, please take a moment to sign in. There's the QR code that's posted in the share screen and the short link that's directly in the chat if you need to use the same device that you're using now. Uh, Tuesday Times Roundtable is made possible through a formal partnership between the uh, Office of Global Learning Initiatives here at FIU and the New York Times. This partnership provides the FIU community, so students, professors, anyone with an at FIU.edu email address, to free digital access to the New York Times. Each one of our Tuesday Times Roundtable sessions is linked to an article. You can read this week's article at go.fiu.edu slash TTR0117. So that's January 17th, today's date, right? So go.fiu.edu slash TTR0117. If you've gotten to that point and you hit a paywall and New York Times is telling you sign in to read this article, that just means that you haven't officially activated your access to the New York Times just yet. You can do that. You can set that up with your, again, at fiu.edu email address at accessnyt.com. And the, art the article again for today's session, go.fiu.edu slash TTR0117. A couple of introductory activities, things, announcements that we'll have before we officially get started today. Transformation contest for 2023 is officially open and accepting submissions. Uh, if you'd like to learn more about the transformation contest, which is the OGLI's annual um, art and writing contest where we partner with the Talent Lab over at FIU in DC to do a specialized fly-in for our transformation contest winners. It's really about producing some sort of media that shares a transformative international or intercultural experience that you've had. And that trip, again, is free and paid for. Uh, usually it's a small group between four and five winners. Those, that application, application submission process is open now. The deadline to submit is January 31st. My medallion students and enacting global learning micro credential students that are joining us today, please make sure that you log today's information in your points log and have that proof of participation for that points log. You can do that by saving the confirmation page of your sign in or doing a screenshot of the confirmation page of your sign in. Um, and if you have any questions about the global learning medallion or the enacting global learning micro credential or transformation contests, and especially another round of submissions happening with the Millennium Fellowship for this year. We are hosting a GL info session tomorrow afternoon at 1 p.m. You can sign up for that at go.fiu.edu slash GL info. I'm getting a quick question in the chat that I think is relevant. This link also for honors credit. So if you are an honors college student looking to get your global citizenship credit, you'll find that information in the sign-in. So again, Make sure that you do the sign in and we will report your information back to Panther Connect. And then officially we can get started with today's session that is hosted by Dr. Wendy Guest. She is a faculty member at the Department of Marketing and Logistics where she designed the health and fitness marketing course and teaches two additional courses in the Honors College, the essential elements of interaction and exploring culture, the movement and music. I'm sure Dr. Guest will also share what other courses she's offering this and upcoming semesters. Dr. Guest combines her academic training in the disciplines of health, promotion, management, and anthropology with a variety of professional experience. She has received teaching awards, has multiple GL and QM certified courses, and is certified in systemic, yeah, systemic dynamics of organizations. That was, that's what to say. During college, Dr. Guest was a member of the ballroom and folk dance performing companies, competing and performing internationally. She has continued combining the creative and collaborative skills to develop programs for wellness interactions, including a profile understanding interaction styles in groups. Welcome, Dr. Wendy Guest, to today's Tuesday Times Roundtable. Thank you. Thank you, Michelle. It's so exciting to be here. And it's 
it's really exciting to see so many of you taking time to join us for lunch. This is awesome. So let's do a quick uh, overview of uh, who's like, there's just so many people here. So um, if you can do your little thumbs up reaction, who's from Honors College? Awesome. Who's from uh, like a humanities area? Global learning. I know we're just, I'm working on getting all the thumbs up. So <laughs> um, marketing or business. Fantastic. And I'm sure there's a few others I haven't named and I'm sorry, but uh, I'm welcome. I'm so glad you all are here. Um, as Michelle said, um, I am, I have too many screens open. <laughs> I can't find where I am. Let me get my uh, desktop going. And that's not what's supposed to be up yet, but guess what we're going to be doing? And we'll get into presentation mode. So as, as Michelle wonderfully announced, we are, uh, yeah, we are in the very first um, TTR for this semester. And I'm really honored and privileged to be able to, to share some things with you and hopefully get you off to a great start for this semester. So let's jump in. Um, as is mentioned, I'm a teaching professor in the Department of Marketing and Logistics in the College of Business. Uh, I teach there classes like international marketing and my signature course, which is health and fitness marketing. And again, I spent years performing and teaching ballroom dance, social dance, folk dance, including square dance, salsa, bachata, you name it. I taught it, <laughs> trying, to, trying to get square dance to come back, uh, you know, with a whole new twist. And, uh, you know, as part of that, it kind of created like a little lab, an experimental lab where I got to really see what was going on with people's behaviors and emotions. And from that lab, I just really gained this, this intense interest in understanding what makes us tick. You know, why is it we can go to a class and, and you know, that involves dance, but we're still nervous and it's hard to take that first step. And and all those, those kinds of issues. And then once we get that first success, all of a sudden, all the other things kind of click into place. And um, so, so that just started this, you know, lifelong interest in behaviors and emotions. So with that, let's talk about emotions a little bit. Um, as you might have noticed, the link in the article uh, on the New York Times article was, was looking at a safety net for emotions, primarily for men. But I'd like to say we're all in the same kind of crazy emotional boat, uh, especially after the last few years of, of being in a, a very unique worldwide situation where we're in various forms of isolation and lockdown and, and, and not really seeing each other. <laughs> And so, you know, that's had a huge impact on, on our emotional well-being. And so we wanted to kind of tackle that a little bit so that you can have a great semester of emotional wellness, right? So let's, oops, too many. So I wanted to kind of first say, like, what are emotions? So I'd love it if you guys on the chat would just kind of say, hey, what are some emotions? What are emotions to you? No right or wrong answer, but it's just like, what are these things? Ready, go. What you feel, expression, yes, feelings. Lots about feelings. There was a great song about that in the, back in the day. Feelings, no. state of being, the way you feel, self-expression. Usually strong, but can be, yeah, yeah. You guys have got some great stuff. Feelings and acts, our reactions to the outer world. Also, our reactions to our inner world. It's hard. Yeah, you're right. Um, it is hard to uh, define emotions. I mean, yes, there's some scientific definitions. It's a little, you know, it's a thought that creates a chemistry, but 
it actually is pre-thought in a way because our emotions were were set up and designed for us to detect um, safety, right? So back even before we had language skills, our emotions are what kept us alive and safe because we could sense something fearful that we needed to run away from long before we could analyze, ooh, this maybe is not safe. Maybe I should leave. That takes up too much time. So our emotions are like instantaneous temperature gauges of, you know, it's time to get out of this area, or this is a good area to be in on the positive side of emotions. So great answers. Thanks. Let's look at the next one. Now, you know, we live in this world where there's lots of misconceptions about what, what, are, what are appropriate emotions and what are not appropriate emotions. Some of those might be like in, in various cultures and in various different ways. Emotions aren't really desirable. Ugh. But then how is that? Can we, can we have a blanket statement about that? I mean, because, right, is laughing desirable? Is happy desirable? Or are we just supposed to be robots? And I, I, will, I won't say, you know, you've probably heard um, some lectures or some, some discussions that felt very unemotional. And then you've probably experienced some lectures or interactions that were very emotional. And where is it okay? And there's, there's one level at home or, or personal, and there's another level at, at um, the office or in professional life. What, what emotions are okay? So I thought we would just tackle that a little bit. Oh, yeah, there are a couple of other things I can manage on my own or mm, just push through. Uh, not always, but it's, that's sometimes the, the messages that we get told or that we become to believe in ourselves is that we have to figure this out on our own and we can't have emotions um, or we're not supposed to feel business should be very analytical work should be very analytical but you know what guess where the intuition is the intuition is connected to our emotions which are connected to our digestive system look at that this makes this three-way setup. When we're stressed, as you've all probably heard in a lecture or two somewhere, stress impacts the body physically, right? When we're stressed, our body says, oh my gosh, I'm going to die. I need to like survive. I either got to run away or I've got to fight my way out of this, right? So when we're in that stress mode, and the body doesn't differentiate between, um, you know, mild stress and massive stress. Everything is fight or flight mode. And when we go there, then all of the energy goes to protecting you uh, in terms of like, do you have to run or do you have to fight? And so digestion is kind of a luxury at that point. So it kind of shuts down. Right, And the digestion is where our emotions live. So when our digestion is shut down, then our emotions are shut down or mm, not doing so well. Uh, and so we want to make sure that we really get that, that idea that stress, <laughs> stress impacts both digestion and emotions. And that's going to now prepare us to there to our first little activity of the day and so if you all would would grab your cameras and uh click on that qr code it's going to take you to a little app called padlet and we're going to jump into this ex next exercise so we talked a little bit about the misconception of emotions like they're bad or they're not, they're not desirable, but they're part of us. We are hardwired to have emotions. So it's the emotions themselves aren't good or bad. It's what we do with them. And I like to use a little shock statement that sometimes we can have emotional constipation. <laughs> I know, not a great topic during lunchtime. However, when we are emotionally constipated, 
it kind of means our emotions are stuck. Like our emotions are in that fight or flight mode and everything digestion, everything's shut down. So we're not really able to express those emotions. And so I'm glad you guys are finding your way there. You're giving us lots of different um, ideas. Look at all those. Let me see if I can actually pull that up <laughs> and get us in there. I think I can do that. Yes, here we go. Can you all see that still? Awesome. So that, look at all the different kinds of emotions that both are misconceived and also constipating because that's a really, really key issue is that they shut us down. They, they keep us feeling stuck. And I love some of these answers you all are coming up with. Shame, <laughs> disgusto in Spanish, thank you. Vulnerability, hopelessness, anger, stress, lots of stress insecurity, frustration, loneliness, resentment, some good ones, sadness, fear. And these are probably some emotions that we've been experiencing off and on for the last uh, couple of years in this pandemic mode of, you know, especially the fear of what's coming up. What are we going to be able to manage Right? And so all of these are just stuck inside of us until we figure out a way to resolve them. So great job on those. Thanks for all those answers and lots of likes and votes. I appreciate that, that you all kind of click on the ones that you also relate to that other people have, have that. So we've got a, some good votes for vulnerability, confusing, stress, frustration. Excellent. Yes. And I'm going to jump back over here. And thanks for answering those. You see how, like, these are emotions we might have every day, but when they accumulate, they get stuck. And then we're stuck. And then our interactions at work or at home may not be the best. Because why we're, we're like not reacting like we sh could if we were not in stress mode, right? So let's move on to that. Let's think, where does this start, right? So different, you know, different cultures have different ways of interacting with our, with our children, right? And sadly, in a lot of cultures, it's like we tell them right off the bat, Stop being so emotional. Stop crying. You know, quit being a baby. You're whining about this, right? We, we tell our kids it's not cool to have emotions. But kids, you know, that's how they survive is through emotions. And so when we just deny the emotions, now we have not learned any healthy ways to manage those emotions because they're going to happen whether you want them or not, right? Right? So now let's look at some more. Oops, sorry. Um, how many of you have ever heard this one? Boys don't cry. Grow up. Act like a man. Act like a woman. And, you know, sometimes we're harder on the men than we are on the women. Uh, fortunately, I hope this is, is starting to change and that we're, we're acknowledging the place of emotions. But in my, you know, my parents' generation and my younger years, this, this was still a huge issue that males were not supposed to have emotions. And then what happens? We get to work and we hear things like this. Oh, you just have a poker face. I can't, I can't, I can't figure out what you're trying to say or what you're feeling. Um, you, you just, are you, you know, that person, oh, they're just so cold. You know, they don't really interact. Ooh. Um, maybe you've, you've had this, not had this, but experienced this about somebody. You know, it's like, it's like, you're just a wall. Like I can't get through. I can't penetrate through this wall to understand and have a conversation with you about anything. And then, then you've got the whole passive aggressiveness 
uh, and we have where it's like we're gonna say something like a little jab but pretend that everything's okay because it's again it's not okay to express that we have some of those emotions by golly so when we're at work and we're trying to collaborate we're trying to be an effective team player and we have these kinds of constipating <laughs> issues now what do we do how do we get past those and that's what we want to spend the rest of our session kind of looking at so that you can get past the ones that you experience as well as the ones that your your fellow colleagues may be experiencing with you uh, on a side note just as a parent of two boys who are now you know adults when they were teenagers um, they had the whole poker face wall, the passive aggressive, you know, and, and everything mom said was just like, Ugh. <laughs> and so I found for me, the only way I could get through to them or connect with them in any level emotionally was to say, was to explain why I'm asking something, right, is, and this is, you know, one tip, it was like, you know, I'm asking this because I went through something like this, da -da, da 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 and this is where I'm coming from, so I'm trying to understand where you're coming from. And when they could, most of the time, when they could then calm down enough to realize why I'm asking something, then they were more willing to, to open up and to share it with me. And I find this to be the case, you know, with... <laughs> All levels of adults too. It's like when we understand the root of the question or the interaction, we're more likely to to open up a little bit. But if if we don't know and we then we perceive that we're being attacked, right? So then we're closing. Yeah. Anybody had uh, any of experiences like that? Oh, I'm. Sorry, I'm catching up on the chats. Yeah, we are the protectors. Uh, big issue. Yeah. Oh, interesting. Sophia says a big issue in the Latino community. Which one um, specifically are we talking about with the issue? I'm playing catch up. I'll let them respond. Attitudes, attitudes. I'm ethnically Cuban, and I would agree with Sophia. Um, the word that we have heard in Spanish is machismo. It's this. Like, <laughs> I've heard this word. <laughs> right. Yeah. We we train our uh, machismo. I'm going to say that we train our men to have a certain kind of um, outer face, right? And then that translates into all kinds of other types of communication breakdown. Right, because we cannot um, challenge that, that state of, you know, the uh, that what's the word I'm looking for, the idea of what it is to be a man. If we challenge that with any kind of emotion, now we're challenge challenging their whole idea and perception of what it is to be male, right? And so when we can kind of say, here's where I'm coming from um and and i'm not trying you know i'm not trying to break it down i'm trying to understand that's the that's the biggest breakthrough you can do is to try to understand not to challenge right so if can i what can we do oh some more well no i just i have a a, a question for you because in the same yeah. text of what you're saying if we go back to the Padlet, if anybody still has the Padlet open, anger can... comes up so many times in that Padlet of emotions. And in that machismo that we were just talking about and the masculinity that you were just talking about, anger seems mm -hmm. to be like the primary emotion that we see there. So it's funny that we that we say like emotional, but anger, as we've all acknowledged, is itself an emotion, right? And that's so that's so powerful. Yes. And thanks, Kevin, for your comment, too, because now you've got a, a double entendre of, of interacting with the concept of machismo and 
life, <laughs> right? Yeah, uh, thanks, Sherry. And yeah, we, we, why do we encourage kids not to cry? Is it just because we don't want to hear it? Or is it because, you know, something else? <laughs> Right. And, and so, yeah, this is a huge problem. And, and just to back up a little bit, when we tell people it's not okay to have emotions, where do those go? Because, and that's why I call it constipation, because those emotions get stuck. They don't go away unless we actively resolve them. So they get buried in down in our bodies and they get stuck. And, and not, not to be graphic, but, you know, when you've got a buildup of, <laughs> of, of constipation, <laughs> it's going to it's have to go somewhere at some point. And usually that becomes an explosion. In this case, an explosion of emotion. Yes, exactly, Marion. Or is it Marion or Marlon? Sorry, Marlon. You blow up, Right? And so you, you got, you know, the body is going to eventually have to get rid of all that emotion. And we can either, you know, wait and do it in an explosion of anger, or we can try to recognize it, acknowledge it, and, and manage it all, all, all the way through, right? It's, yes. So, and that's what we're going to try to give you guys some tips and some activities to do today is to like, think about the management aspect of it. So we don't have to wait for that explosion. Right. And, and you know, we've all been in situations where out of nowhere, you, you say one innocent comment, you know, passing comment and all of a sudden, rah, you know, and we're like, and then at the moment, you know, we're now being sucked into their level of constipation instead of being able to go, you know, what are you really upset about? Because it's not, it's not me. What is, what is out there that's accumulated for so long that, that this is the time you have to explode? Yeah. Good. Okay. So let's go back to you here because now here's the real question. We can identify the problem all day long. Sorry, my screens are covering each other. Okay, there we go. But ideally, we want to be able to take some action. Because otherwise, things just stay the same. Oh, passive aggressive. Yes. And, and we do. We're, we're taught to bottle up everything. And... I would, I'm going to go out on the limb that maybe I, you know, this is my personal opinion. Take it for what it's worth. But look at the messages we also get, not just from our parents and, and those we are close to, but also in, in the media, in TV and movies and, and sometimes social media. What happens, what, what do people do when they've like had a really bad day, right? It's like you only have three choices, right? You, you go drink it off, you go sex it off, or, or you become violent, right? So it's like, is that really the only things we can do? Or yes, a break up at ice cream, right? We eat it off, <laughs> right? Does that get rid of the emotions? No, it, it's just, it's, a, it's allowing that explosion. So, um, you know, I'd like to say, let's look at some other options, right? There are more things that we can do. So, whoops, sorry, I'm going. So let's, let's take a minute to think about this. There we go. That was the end of that slide. Oh, I know, here we are back. If you'll go back to the same Padlet, we're just going to continue the conversation on that same Padlet which is, what do you think, are there some other healthy ways to manage our emotions? So let's see what you got coming up. Dun, 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 dun. This is where that Jeopardy music would be good, right? Yeah, what can we do to like manage those emotions in a healthy way? And 
things you can also add on the chat if you're not in the, the Padlet, but what do we got? Journal, workout, exercise, journal, meditate. Oh, yeah, good stuff. Staying occupied. Mm -hmm. Therapy, talk to someone, cold shower. Yeah. <laughs> talk to your loved ones about your feelings. Yes. Read a book about something positive. Oh, I love all these ideas. Yay, we'll have to collect these and, and, and share if we can at the end or something. Great stuff. You guys are ahead of, the, ahead of the game here. Wonderful. So now we're actually going to do a little breakout session. And I am presume by now you all are familiar with breakout rooms. But what I'm going to ask you to do in just a minute, not yet, is, is to, to kind of get into some smaller groups. And I have four categories that I'm going to walk you through, and I want you as a group to pick one of those categories and then come up with some potential action plans. And then we'll come back and after that and, and share some of the great feedback that you all have. Sound good? I know, if I was in a live class, I'd say, just say yes. <laughs> okay, so let's, let's go over those. All right. So some of you all are a little young. I don't think this brand is around anymore. It used to be called X-Lax, but it's a form of laxative. And so the idea here is, is laxative for your emotions, right? So if you think about laxative in our life, we need extra fiber to help the digestion system flow, right? And essentially that is just... Meaning you got to move to pardon the directness, get the crap out of your system, right? Movement is what gets things flowing and going, right? So we just got to do that. The next step is, pardon the pun, digestion starts in your mouth, right? But your mouth is connected to your mind as well. So what goes in also comes out right? What comes into your mind, like what you watch, what you read, what you bring into your being has to go somewhere because that all creates emotions too. So we want to be careful what we're bringing in because what we in ingest is what we ex you know, get rid of. So like if you, if you fill your mind with crap, you what you're going to say is toxic crap, right? Oh, let's just say toxic. Maybe that's better. <laughs> you get to, if you fill your mind with toxicity, then what's coming out of your mouth is going to be toxic as well. And that also revolves around unresolved stress. Yeah. So what, how can we get it out of our system in a healthy way before it comes out in an explosive way? That's what step two is about. Okay, let's look at step three. And I know I'm borrowing from Disney. Let it flow, right? <laughs> but I know she says, let it go. But I'm saying, let it flow, right? <laughs> Do we need this, right? So part of that is to prepare in advance of what you are actually, let's say you've got to have a, a challenging conversation either at work or maybe at home. And, or you've, you've been at, verbally attacked and you're going to go away and prepare a response right one of those kinds of things instead of just reacting take some time to get in the flow of what you want to say right how do we prepare in advance so think of some healthy ways of how you can uh, do that preparation so you're prepared to respond instead of just to react. Yeah. And then step four is, <laughs> sorry, while we were on this topic, I couldn't forgive it, but forgive your butts. And we all, it, it, we have this tendency, well, I could forgive her, but, or it, it, it was all okay, but, or, you know, we always have a but. So let's like forgive those butts. How can we do, forgiveness is kind of to a two-step process 
one, we have to be okay or find a way to make peace with whatever the issue was with that other person. But what we forget is that we also have to make peace within ourselves. Yeah, and so I'm going to throw this little thought in there. Forgive yourself for allowing the other person to remain in power over you. Mm, food for thought. So now um, let, let's uh, see if we can do some breakout groups. We'll get you in maybe anywhere from two to four people because I know there's a lot. Uh, and I want you to, as a group, pick one of those four steps and we'll post them in the, the chats too so that you can remember what the steps are. And then let's take about maybe five minutes and, and do some dialogue on maybe some healthy ways to manage one of those steps, some healthy activities. Sound good? Sounds great. And then Dr. Seth, after the five minutes, we'll come back, kind of report out, share some ideas. Yeah. Do a QA. and a Yes. We'd so. love to hear the, some of the great ideas you all come up with. Perfect. Okay. Uh, so Anna has done us all a wonderful favor. Thank you very much, Anna, and thrown those four steps that you can discuss in the chat. And the breakout rooms are now officially open. So see you all in a few. Uh, I'm also going to go ahead and just put on a five minute timer. If that's cool, Dr. Awesome. Perfect. That's fantastic. Good, you all are finding your way there. 24, 25, 24, 23. <laughs> and if you're not finding the breakout room, feel free to, to create a chat um, in the main room. Now, quick question, Anna, when they go into their breakout room, will they still be able to see the group chat or will it become an individual chat so maybe we should an, yeah it becomes an individual chat within their room. oh well but then we can do a massive broadcast to all the groups exactly oh, oh, oh. and i figured we okay. could do that when we got to the one minute mark well for the steps i wanted to do just so that they have that reference of which one to pick yeah, we can do yeah I have it copied. I'm ready to paste it um i do know that when you're in a breakout room normally the last thing that was in the chat you can see Still, like when you okay. come to the room, and so usually the last thing that's on there, but they just won't, when they post again, it'll just be in there. But we can broadcast. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, um, we can just go ahead and broadcast. Pick, you know, oh, I did pick it. one of those steps. Awesome. Awesome, awesome. And for those of you that are still in the main room, if you didn't find your way to a breakout room, feel free to, to kind of talk around in the chat, uh, pick one of those steps and start thinking of a healthy activity ways to manage. I love that some of the participants like brought in cultural differences already in the whole like dealing with emotional processes. I think that's, that's huge in South Florida. There's a, a comedian female comedian especially that she does this whole bit about like being in the workroom or whatever and her boss like goes into this huge fit and every time that somebody does that she goes it looks like we're getting a little emotional maybe we need to take a step back <laughs> you look you look like you're you're getting emotional <laughs> like that's so harsh and to check that temperature gauge <laughs> yeah and I think that's actually uh, the end of the. Oh, I've got whatever two, it is I'm trying to say. PowerPoint. So I'm going to do a stop share, and then when we all come back, we'll be able to actually see peeps. Absolutely.
And we got a few folks still in the main room. So you guys are welcome to kind of just join in a group conversation with us and, and share some things that you might think about for uh, managing one of those steps. We'd love to hear from you all, either on chat or in the, you know, or verbally. And now they're quiet. No. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't it always the case? Uh, so we've got a minute left on our timer and the breakout rooms take a minute to close. So do we want to just oh, go good time to them and then? The, yeah, good time to broadcast. Start wrapping up those conversations. Well, I'm just going to go ahead and click close on the breakout rooms and then it gives them a one minute timer where the, then the breakout right. rooms automatically shut down. So I'm just going to go ahead and do it. Perfect. Perfect. Welcome back, everyone. Um, I know that Dr. Guest is going to ask anyone that's comfortable to speak out, but if you would rather use the chat and share some of the ideas that you heard in the chat, you can go ahead and start doing that now. Yeah, we'd love, like to hear uh, kind of from each group one main takeaway that, that you had. Oh, might have to do some. Got it. <laughs> good, good, good. Yeah, so one main takeaway. Uh, from your from your room, your chat room that you came up with that might be able to share with us all some some additional healthy ways to manage those emotions in one of those formats. Ready, go. And that's you know you can either raise your hand and and speak or or uh, just share it in the chat. Genesis. Yes. Hello. Hi. Um, in Hi. our in our breakout room, we we kind of focused on step three, which was letting it flow. Um, so I was just kind of sharing with um, the group just that a while ago, um, when I was studying at Broward College, we I kind of took advantage of like the little therapy sessions that they had, and one of the really cool things I learned was um, just really focused on journaling, but being like proactive to like buy a journal that no one will ever like see and really writing down like our emotions as to exactly what we want to say to somebody exactly you know what it is that you would want to release and I think that helps because sometimes like we won't process through exactly um or play out how it is that you want to have a conversation with somebody but we'll hold back and we're afraid like I don't want to say this because maybe someone will, will think I'm too evil because I said this or I'm too like many things but if you really write down um those things that will really help and I know someone else from the group also mentioned like they used to like write stories like in high school and like, you know, I guess get creative in that way. And I think that really helps you flow out your emotions. If you use a creative outlet, whether it's like drawing or it's, um, you know, writing a song, like it's just putting those emotions somewhere and, and, and finding a way to like, let them out. So I think that that's kind of what we spoke about in our group. Fantastic. Oh, what great ideas. Tatiana. Yeah, thank you. We talked uh, with my colleague student and uh, we uh, decided that the emotion we most often need uh, to get hold of is anger. So what mm. you can do if you are very angry uh, at, uh, at a certain moment, uh, my colleague suggested that uh, you might talk to someone, but what is, uh, for example, if you don't have a chance to talk, but you need to continue your meeting, if you are angry during a meeting or a class or something uh, uh, one more idea is just talk to yourself try to look differently at the situation or my solution because i believe a great release for emotions may be movement i would do some energetic yes. gesture or walk across the room or change the subject, for example, asking my colleagues to stand up and exercise and do something different from what we are doing before. Just change the uh, communicative situation abruptly, even if we cannot change the subject that made us angry. That's the solution that we came to as a result of some discussion. Thank you so much. Thank you, that was awesome. 
Good. I know Stan Roberto, thank you for sharing for your group. Uh, step three, um, finding an outlet to healthy expression of one's emotions. Yes. Like talking to a friend, a uh, trusted family member, therapy. Yeah, great suggestions. And Carlos, oh, stress rooms. Like you have a whole room full of debris and just go crazy and whacking it all. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I will say I found sometimes when I'm angry, I get my best housework done. <laughs> yeah, it's like, mop that floor. <laughs> Fold those clothes, yeah. Along that line, good stuff. Anyone else care to share? Okay, uh, Carlos, let's see. Joe's forgive. The forgive the butt step like we were talking about how the reaction and aftermath of forgiveness is different for everyone yeah it's a really good point uh that the forgiveness does look different for each of us but essentially when the forgiveness stage happens it's like a huge weight has been lifted off of us like we can suddenly breathe again and and that's super super important uh, let's see, Marlon talked about letting it go and forgiving the daily habit to have open dialogue and talk things out and not be grudgeful. I like that grudgeful. Yeah, yeah. And it's like we shift, we shift what we focus on. And I'm going to give you like a kind of a couple of closing remarks. What you focus on is going to grow and expand, positive or negative. So if you focus on how stupid everything is, then everything's going to be stupid. <laughs> if you focus on like, you know, how much the person is not doing in your life or the coworker is not doing in the office, then that's all you're going to see. But if you flip that and say, okay, well, case in point, I just got back from India. And now my perspective on Miami traffic is it's a whole lot calmer, <laughs> right? And so when you flip what you look for and what you expect to see, you're going to see more of whatever it is you look for and expect, right? <laughs> Traffic in Puerto Rico. <laughs> yeah, <that's> totally. <laughs> and then that's one that. last thing um, before we jump into some Q&A is that you cannot change anyone else and you're not supposed to. The only thing you can change is you and your attitude. I know, this is like, which is sometimes the hardest thing to do. But when we focus on changing ourselves, then everything around us also changes. And so thank you all for being here. Um, we have some time, I think, for some Q&A. Absolutely. Thank you so much. So anyone questions for Dr. Guest, we are more than glad to read them directly out of the chat. Or if you would like to speak your question out loud, same process. You want to go ahead and raise your hand and we'll call out. Our questions are just um, additional comments and thoughts and your takeaways. So we've got one in the chat. Um, Manager, have to focus on in higher education. Are we asking the group? Um, okay, is it Nikki? Sorry if I'm saying your name wrong. That sounds like that question's for the group. Um, and anybody that wants yeah, to yeah. Okay. in the chat, absolutely do. Uh, okay. and we have somebody raising their hand. What's the best way for you to decompress stress? Well, that's a great question. Uh, to decompress stress, for me, my first thing is catch myself in the stress and breathe. You'd be surprised how much just a deep inhale and exhale can catch that stress loop before it gets out of control. And then movement, even if it's just getting up and walking outside or walking into another room, that movement kind of overrides the stress loop signal and, and lets your body get out of that fight or flight mode. Okay, is internalizing and forgetting the issue always a bad thing? Um, or should we always, con I, you, Carlos, thank you for asking that. Um, 
And that is, that's a fine line. So internalizing and forgetting, it's only bad when it like gets stuck and it accumulates when we have like day after day after day of things we have to like internalize, right? So, but there's different ways to confront the problem. Sometimes it's just understanding the situation from a different perspective, right? Because if we don't understand, we're stuck in limbo and, you know, but when we can like step back enough to go, what's really happening here? Is there, what kind of emotions are they going through or the situation? When we can see it from a different perspective in a way that's also confronting the problem because when we understand it, it's no longer a problem that needs a solution. It's, it's now just a situation, yeah? So it looks like Marlon was trying to raise his hand to ask the question. Marlon, do you want to speak out your question? Yes. Um, hi, how are you? Um, I want to honestly get a, a honest opinion uh, about something that I've been going through for, for many years, actually. Um, I yeah. know you mentioned that the best way of um, bettering a situation is changing your attitude. Um, but I wanted to uh -huh. get your opinion on, um, for example, I was uh, recently on vacation with my with my father. My father remarried, and his wife um, has been kind of closed-minded on having a relationship with me since I was a 14-year-old kid. Um, mm -hmm. You know, he wants to have open dialogue with her, but how could, what's your opinion on approaching a situation like that when somebody is not open-minded and it's just close to the um to the idea that um she wants to have anything to do with me uh it's, yeah. it's tough when um, it is tough because that impacts your relationship with your father um, correct as well yeah. and and it, you know it sounds like in some way she's feeling threatened and not, I don't mean threatened like in a safety way but as in if you know her perhaps feeling less secure with the relationship with your your father then if you're around maybe your your father's going to want to focus his attention all on you and so it's it's really about like helping both of you feel like it's not a competition there's enough love for for all of you. I think Correct. Yeah, and then of course. <laughs> um, my my attitude towards it was my dad wanted to to kind of sit down, and my feeling about it was um, that I didn't feel that was the right way to do things because I felt like through just easing up the tension and kind of easing in, you know, easing up. Um, mm -hmm. she kind of, I felt like she was, she was being more at ease than, than actually having to sit yeah. down, um, because she, Yeah, because that might I make her like, feel like she's being attacked, in a sense. Course. Yes, correct. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Is there okay, any so times think, when you have an opportunity to just to interact with her in any way? Um, I'm easing up to that because it's one of those things that... You know, I told, now it's come to the point that I talked to her and she actually looks at me. You know, it's it's been a rough, it's mm -hmm. been a long time. So, uh, yeah, just trying to ease on that. a lot of years, and little by little. Yeah. Thanks. So, yeah, that's that's uh, an ongoing. <laughs> I think there was another question. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks for asking. I appreciate it. Where are we? Mm hmm. Um, I think it was Liz. I'm not sure if you put your hand down at this point. Hi, yes. Um, I was just asking about the attendance, but I see that the link was resent. So thank you so much. And thank you for oh, the meeting. Good. good, good, good. Anyone else? Any final questions for Dr. Okay. There's There's a few chats in here. Um, so while we're looking for any hand raises, I'll, I'll see if I can't uh, grab some of these chat questions. Andres, I love this idea about facing culture shock. Um, having, having grown up as an, um, 
dependent in the military or a child of military parents. And we found ourselves in various countries and we were always moving and always, you know, somebody was always moving and always having to start over and figuring out like, what is that new place and culture all about? Um, so I, I totally relate to that idea of culture shock of um, figuring out a new place. And I would say to that, uh, it's like, allow yourself to be just like a child and be curious, like, oh, wow, what is this about? And ooh, what is that about? And, and ask a lot of questions. And I found over the years, when I make an effort, I mean, like moving here to Miami was a little bit of a culture shock to me, because even though I was in Texas, where there was some Spanish around, um, I wasn't quite as saturated as I am here uh, with it. And so, you know, I could either be like, angry about it or just like see it as a new adventure and what can I learn about this place that benefits me in the long run so it's it's a lot about just being open to the adventure hope that gives you some ideas of something to work with on today's let's see um Natalie Keely oh great Oh, thanks for that tip. Um, Marcus Aurelius Meditations. Good, looking for that. Okay. Uh, let's see. I wasn't able to get the form completed. Um, oh, okay. So that's so a different question. Thank you. For the it is 129. Um, so I'm just going to, we we're not going to necessarily go anywhere. If you still have extra questions and you want to throw them in the chat and Dr. Guest. If, if you want to continue on past the 1.30, we're more than welcome to do that. Thank you so much, everyone, for joining us. And a round of applause for Dr. Guest for an absolutely fantastic session. Uh, you can join us again next Tuesday. Times Roundtable continues next week online as well. So we are opening and closing our spring series fully online this year. So today was online. Next week, we'll continue online with the threat of anti-Semitism in the U.S. today. Uh, it's going to be part of the official lineup of FIU's eighth annual um, Holocaust and Genocide Awareness Week. You can see more details about that campus-wide event and series of events that are happening. Um, and you can see the full lineup of our entire spring 2023 series, which will return to in-person in GC 150 in two weeks at go.fiu.edu slash TTR. And lastly, if you want to give us some feedback on some future um, ideas for topics and proposals of Tuesday Times Roundtable sessions, I encourage you, especially our students, um, to use that QR code and fill out that form. Otherwise, thank you so much, everyone, for being here. Thank you so much, Dr. Guest, for a fantastic session. Um, and we'll wrap up for today. Have a nice day. Awesome. Thank you. And then Dr. And thanks so much for hosting this. It is it is absolutely our pleasure. Um, if you want to continue to answer your questions in the in the chat, Dr. Guest, absolutely we can we can do that. I know that you yeah, I, I can hang on a couple more minutes to... and see if there's any other things or everybody can carry on with their the rest of their wonderfully day. emotionally resolved day. <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and stop the recording as well.